everyone. I am Rebecca from Chemnitz, and today we are going to play around with dyeing with some natural color extracts that come in the Earth Hues Botanical Dye Kit. Today we are going to be looking at both logwood purple, which depending on the conditions and the mordants, you can get either from a blue purple to a black, or I think with the addition of iron, you can get more of a gray, um, and clutch which can give, I believe, either a reddish brown or yellowish brown. We will be dyeing 20 gram mini skeins and we're going to look at the effects of these colors with and without an alum mordant. The kit comes with a pre-measured amount of dye to dye a pound of fiber and I'm going to be dyeing a total of 40 grams of each color, which is approximately a tenth of the amount. I'm going to do my best to measure out an amount that I think should hopefully give us some kind of medium shade on our mordanted yarn, but I am also expecting that I will be making some mistakes with the proportions and that I will, I know I will be redoing with this and playing with this again at a later date. If you'd like to learn more about this kit and everything that's in it, uh, go and check out my affiliate link in the video description to the Knit Picks website. The kit comes with four different natural dyes, your alum mordant, I think it also has a little bit of iron in there in case you want to shift some of the colors, and gloves and a mask. Clutch comes from the heartwood of an acacia tree in India. It looks like a soda ash rinse will redden any of the color that we get from the clutch. I don't think I'm going to do that today. Maybe at a later date I'll take a deep dive or a deeper dive into each of the colors individually and do a little more variations. But first, I really want to see the effect of with and without using the alum mordant with each of these hues. It does look like I might want to leave the clutch in the dye bath a little longer than the logwood. Logwood comes, also comes from the heartwood of a tree that is located in Mexico, Central America, and South America. Oh, I didn't know that it's still used today, and it's still used to make black pantyhose. <laughs> Interesting. Um, I'm really excited to play with this color because, as you know, purple is my favorite, and yeah, this is just a color that, looking through natural dyeing books, I have been really excited to play with for a long time. I am not worried about getting a solid color on my yarn. I am totally okay with a semi-solid or tonal. I'm not expecting the dye bath to exhaust, but I'm also not concerned with using so much color that there's a lot left over. However, I will be doing my best as I pick out the proportions. Based on the recommendations for the medium shade, of both clutch and logwood purple. I'm going to use a heaping teaspoon of clutch and I will use a quarter teaspoon of the logwood purple. Uh, this is my approximation of doing about a tenth of what they recommend for a pound of fabric. Okay, I have some lukewarm or tepid water in this little cup and we are going to start mixing up our color. I added the alum mordant to our mini skeins a couple days ago and after that I just removed them from the pot and sort of just put them in a Ziploc bag to be stored. But I'm actually now going to rinse them out with a bit of water and then just sort of set them aside so they're nice and saturated. If you want to see more, uh, check out the Dying on the Dandelions with and without Mordant video. And I'm going to go for this heaping teaspoon and start stirring that up. I am wearing gloves and a face mask. I don't, just like a dust mask, I'm not sure if a mask is absolutely necessary, but it might be more for the mordant process, but I figured it's better to be safe than sorry, so I went for it. Okay, we've got a beautiful rusty brown color. 
I'm not sure if anything is dissolved or if we're really more out of suspension, but I'm now going to grab some boiling water uh, so we can try to get it dissolved. And slowly add some boiling water and stir it up. There's definitely particles in there, but I think I'll stir for a little bit until by my best estimate things are dissolved. I have the yarn ready to go in my mason jars and I'm just adding more of the warm water to this so that way I can now start to try to evenly add this color to the two jars. Okay, and I'm going to do the best that I can to be relatively even. It may not be exact. But that water level overall is pretty good. I am going to rinse out this cup with some more of that warm water and just bring up the water level a little bit more in each of our jars. For the logwood purple, I'm once again starting with just a little bit of warm water. And it's nice that all these dyes have come double bagged. We're going to go for a quarter teaspoon of this logwood color. Ooh, that's looking really, really red right now. Oh. Okay, and once again, I'm going to grab some almost boiling water and raise this level. I'm amazed by how red this is, to be honest. I think I was expecting it to look a little more cool toned, but... We will see what we get. That actually seems pretty good. I'm going to rinse off the spoon. Here we go. And again, we are going to add this directly to the jars where we've got mordant and no mordant. trying to keep the water levels approximately even. And do you see that color shift that we got? Uh, right away onto our alum yarn. Oh shoot, I definitely added more without the mordant. There's a little bit left in here that I will go ahead and give to the with the mordant jar before adding a little bit more water to both. This experiment is approximate today. Okay. I'm not sure how well you can see, but right away this, the one with mordant, is looking like what I expected from that logwood purple color. And the one without is looking a lot more red. The two different clutch jars are looking a lot more similar overall. Maybe the one with mordant is a hint more yellow, but overall I didn't see a huge hue shift like I saw with the logwood. Now I am going to add all of these jars to our double boiler. The nice thing about the double boiler setup is that our yarn won't get too hot. I do want to check the temperature. It's like our dye bath is close to about 200 degrees Fahrenheit right now. Um, that is the temperature that we want in our jars. That is sort of the goal temp. So our instructions say starting at 120 degrees Fahrenheit, slowly raise the temperature of the dye bath over 30 to 60 minutes. Well. I'm not sure what the temperature is inside the jars, but sure. <laughs> um, and then hold that specific temperature for another 30 to 45 minutes, rotating the yarn regularly. 
Um, I'm not planning on poking the yarn. I'm planning on just leaving it as is. I'm okay with some kettle dyed effects. So I think given that we're supposed to do about two hours for our weld, I think I'm going to set a timer for 90 minutes and sort of split the difference with some of these instructions. Uh, I, my thermometer is not small enough for me to put it through the into the little mason jars. So I'm going to cover this up and I'm going to set my timers in 30 minute increments so that way I can come back and check on it. I'm not expecting anything to clear, but yeah, I think there's definitely the weld without mordant is more red and with is a little more yellow. I mean, I can see a difference here. They both look sort of like rusty water, which is cool. Um, the logwood, we've got a cranberry, and then we've got that purple. So I hope some of this color stays on the yarn because I think that that is really, really awesome. But anyway, I will come and check back in in 90 minutes. But don't worry, I'll keep a close eye on this and I won't let the dye bath hit too hard of a boil. We are at the 30 minute checkpoint, checkpoint and I decided to bring you back because things are looking kind of cool. Since the yarn has floated up, I am going to push it in, but I want to take a look at the colors. Starting with the logwood, there's still a lot of red in there, but look at that yarn. Sorry, there's a lot of steam. Look at that yarn. Okay, give it just a poke. And since I'm going from no mordant to yes mordant, this color is almost black. I'm sure it'll look lighter. Oh, sorry, my hand. I'm sure it'll look lighter once it dries. It's definitely very purpley, and there is a lot of color in that dye bath. Okay, now let's look at our weld. This one, the one with no mordant, is sort of like a rich almost like fawn. It's almost like Dharma fawn. It's beautiful. And the with mordant, it's looking a bit cloudier. The color is very similar. It's a little less red overall. Um, but I feel like with the weld, a lot of that color has started to absorb. It feels like there's more color left in the two logwood samples than in the two weld. I am going to go ahead and let things remain here in the sty bath for another hour. Again, I'll check in periodically to make sure everything is okay. Oh, it looks like some of the logwood may have crashed out of solution. You can see those powders moving around. Hopefully that won't affect the color in a bad way. I don't see the same thing happening with no mordant. I am going to leave everything in here for another hour. I don't think I'm going to go ahead and do separate times on both. I'm just going to treat everything the same because depending on how the colors come out, we can then decide how we want to modify things more in the future. This is really just a first look at these extracts. The hour and a half is up and I'm now going to remove the lid and turn off the heat completely. I want to let this all cool down pretty slowly. Hogwood with Mordant is looking a little brownish right now, but oh, the color in the yarn is still fine. So that's our with Mordant. Uh, besides that one, everything else looks about the same, but once things cool, I will come and show you the jars closer up. Here are the first results of our natural dyes with the welds on the left and the logwood on the right. Things are still a little warm, so I am not yet going to remove them. We'll do that momentarily. But we definitely got four really distinct hues here. In order, we've got weld no mordant, weld with mordant, logwood no mordant, and logwood with mordant. So let's take a look at the weld first. And wow, so this is no mordant. It is sort of a coppery orange color. I'm not sure how much of this will wash out and we will go and wash this out really shortly, but that is really pretty. 
Uh, now with the mordant, uh, it is more of a warm, it's still orange, but it's more gold. There's more yellow in it and a little bit less red than what we see without the mordant. To make sure I will be able to tell them apart in the end, I added a second knot to our yarn that had the mordant. Now let's take a look at our logwood. So here is our no mordant, which looked rather red, but the color is almost a chocolate brown. Wow, that is just a really, really pretty chocolate brown. And look at all that like red left in there. And then finally, with our mordant, and you can see that the runoff is much more purple. And as for this color, I can't, I think we'll need to know more when it dries. I definitely see some purple um, hues in it in some of those lighter areas. I'm not sure if it's going to feel more gray or more purple because it is very saturated. Part of the reasoning behind doing this view is I wanted you guys to be able to see what the dye baths looked like after we removed the yarn. So again, if we wanted some more reddish brown from the weld, there were instructions um, I like you know to use some soda ash um, with the washing in the end, but I'm not going to do that today. I have a feeling that I'm going to come back and play around with all of these colors a lot more. But now I want to go and wash all of our beautiful yarn. But I'm going to go. I'm going and placing a zip tie around it just so that way I don't tangle them up. But we're going to go wash them all at the same time. I feel like this is the real moment of truth now because there's likely going to be a lot of rinse out and that could affect the final colors a lot. Like, ooh, for example, I think a lot of that brown in the logwood is coming out just from those first few rinses. Like that chocolate brown is feeling a lot less intense to me. Um, this may need a fair amount of rinsing, but we will see. Um, I'm not sure how much is bleeding out of uh, just the no mordant one versus the, the one that has a mordant. The color is very, very intense. I'm adding some clear dish soap to sort of aid with this process. But I think I definitely could have gotten away with having less of the logwood in there. Uh, maybe if I had tried an eighth of a teaspoon for our 40 grams, that would have been a nice place to start. Uh, I honestly can't tell if our weld is bleeding or not because I think that the purple logwood is dominating, dominating this. This honestly isn't so bad. I haven't been washing that long and already the water is a lot clearer. I'm gonna do another round with some soap, um, and then I will put all the yarn through my spin dryer, hang it up to dry, and we'll come back to this dry for some conclusions. Because I know once it dries, I think we'll see more oof, of that logwood, which I just have a feeling is going to be an absolute favorite of mine for my natural dyeing adventures. And I really look forward to playing with that hue more in the future. These results are amazing. I had no idea what to really expect when looking at the difference between yarns that had no mordant and yarns that were treated with an alum mordant. And in one of these cases, the mordant made a massive difference in the tone and shade of the color that we achieved. And in the other case, the change is a lot more subtle. We got more of a red, sort of almost like a fawn colored brown, a war really warm brown without the mordant. And the color is much more of a yellow brown when we had the alum mordant with the weld. I would say 
the level of saturation is really similar between these two. I'm not sure if I went to grayscale if we would be able to tell the difference. All right, I just popped my camera into a dramatic black and white setting and there's a little difference between these two with the way it's set up, but overall they look very, very similar on the grayscale, whereas the logwood colors look vastly different. That logwood, whew, not only did it really make a difference in the tone from a chocolatey brown to a beautiful deep, deep, deep purple, but the purple is a lot more variegated. I think that the colors, those purples were striking really, really quickly, or else something was crashing out of solution maybe, but we ended up with a less even dye job, which is something that I love and means that this could be a really candidate, good candidate for some really fun kinds of resist techniques in the future. The color on our three browns is overall a lot more even than what we see on the purple. There's no question that using natural dye extracts like from this kit is significantly easier than going and collecting and trying to extract the color on your own. This felt a lot easier and there was a lot less guesswork when it came to the heat to use or not to use heat, etc. But I don't know, there's something really, really fun about taking a bag of black beans or running around the neighborhood searching for dandelions that is just really, really hard to beat. And I know that I'm going to have fun uh, as the months and years go by looking for things that I can collect to extract color from. Now don't get me wrong, I am beyond excited to play more with this logwood. You all know purple is my favorite color and I want to try adding iron and looking at it shifting from purple to gray. I think there's some really fun gradients and things that we could do with this and so there's no question I want to play with this a lot more in the future. It's just in terms of the experience, using these natural dye extracts feels very, very similar to using commercial dyes. Um, you know, you're dealing with powders, you're trying to be safe, using dedicated dye equipment. Uh, it's just, you know in your head that you're getting something that was extracted from, I guess, the heartwood of a tree. That being said, what other type of natural dyes should I consider playing with? I have a few other, both in my Earth Hues kit, um, and some that were sent to me from Stony Creek Colors last year uh, that I hope to explore. And yeah, there's also the great outdoors and things that I can collect and play with. So please let me know in the comments below what you think I should try next. I am Rebecca from Chemnitz and these videos that I've done this week, this is really the beginning to my natural dyeing adventure. Sure, maybe I started a year ago, but I'm learning more and more and I'm being exposed to more and more color-wise and technique-wise and I am really, really excited to explore this journey more in the future. It's just another really fun way to play around with color. If you enjoyed this video and would like to support us on another level, go and check out the Chemnitz Patreon. Um, I offer some really cool perks like behind the scenes sneak peeks, early access to new content, and patrons vote every month for the content that I will be releasing in the following month. And it's really, really fun and helpful and a really great way to give direct input on the videos that are coming up here on the Chemnitz Tutorials YouTube channel. You can find a link in the video description and iCard. Finally, don't forget to subscribe, like this video, and turn on notifications. You'll see that bell icon, and that way YouTube can let you know when I start a new live stream or release a new video. Because we have so much fun, you really don't want to miss a thing. Thank you so much for watching!